Let's keep going through this recruiting news, and, and we're going to close out the show here with the top 15 recruiting rankings as of 12-12-23. Um, Jordan Seaton. This was a five-star offensive tackle from IMG Academy that we talked about last week, and it was thought that um, this guy was going to be either committing to Alabama or Ohio State. That, that was – nobody had anybody else – uh, crystal balled or anything like that in this situation. Um, well, he goes on the Fox's show, Undisputed, alongside Skip Bayless and Keyshawn Johnson, and decides that he is going to commit to Colorado and Deion Sanders. Um, so this was this was a big surprise. He was Colorado was in his top seven at one point. But it fell out during the final running, and and so nobody thought that that Colorado would be in the in the running for this thing. This is a big get for an offensive line that was absolutely horrible this past season. I mean, pound for pound, probably the worst offensive line in the country uh, as far as you know the, the level of competition that they played and everything. Um, that it was inadequate, and and they got the quarterback hurt constantly. Something that has to be addressed. This is a huge get. Um, for for Colorado and the fighting primes to get this five star offensive tackle out of IMG, um, what what's your thoughts on that? That was had to have been a shock to the Alabama uh, and Ohio State folks. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, couple him with the six other uh, offensive linemen that that Colorado has gone out and got out of the transfer portal as well. And I, I think that that you know, Dion and company are addressing the. Uh, most significant position group and and what they need. Um, so I, I think that that's that's really important. Uh, excuse me, there were there are five other ones. One of these guys I'm looking at is leaving Colorado. Um, but you know uh, that's that's obviously an issue that that had to be addressed, and they're doing it as best as possible. I mean, how what what better way to protect Shador? Uh, you know, if he decides to come back. Um, than to to bring in as many offensive linemen as you can and just see what sticks, you know, couple him with with some wide receivers and, uh, you know, Colorado's offense really probably isn't going anywhere. Yeah, and, and this was a good passing offense. Could not run the ball worth the crap. I yeah. mean, could not run the ball. I gave up over 60 sacks for the season. Unbelievably bad performance for that offensive line. But hold the phone. We got another Colorado commit here. A guy named Draylon Miller, he's one of the top offensive weapons in the state of Texas for the 2024 recruiting class. He was a four-star wide receiver. Um, he also committed to Colorado this past Sunday. So this came about two months after decommitting from Texas A&M. Obviously read the writing on the wall there with the Jimbo Fisher situation. The wide receiver from the Lone Star State stands six foot, 190 pounds, great hands, natural with the ball in his hands. And he has actually the ability to play running back and has done that some in high school. Uh, he's a top 70 prospect overall in the 24 class, according to 24-7, and the number 12-rated 12, uh, 12 player in the state of Texas and top 15 nationally among wide receivers. This is another nice get. Um, these offensive recruits are, are much-needed pledges for, for Dion and Colorado as they're currently ranked 54th in recruiting. Um, that's, that's not going to get it done. I mean, you've got to at least crawl that thing up into the top 25, right? Um, and, and and they they need that influx of talent, e even with the transfer portal. As hard as they're hitting it, um, we we've talked about it time and time again, man. The transfer portal is for plugging holes. Uh, this this is where you build your boat with the, is with the high school uh, recruiting. This is this is how the raft is built, uh, and you just plug the holes with the the transfers. But look, Colorado's average player rating is a respectable ninety one point eight uh, point zero eight. Um, so the quality of guys that they're getting are good, uh, through high school recruiting. It's just, they're not getting them in huge droves or anything. Let's see if Dion can build up some momentum. Um, what, what do you think about that get at wide receiver? I mean, it's a huge get, um, obviously this, um, I mean, you couldn't ask for much more, you know, top 100 overall player, uh, at receiver. And, you know, that's a position group that, uh, you know, Outside of uh, Travis, I, I think Travis Hunter, I think that you know they, they really didn't have too many options. Um, 
I think the other one was Wheaton, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, but you know, I, I think that they could use a little bit of a facelift in the in the receiving room as well. Um, and let's just see if this offense can get going. I, you know, th- they need a lot of pieces on defense as well. So I think that that's kind of the next area to address in the transfer portal um, and, and through recruiting. But it's a good start to to go out and get the weapons and say, hey, you know, we may give up forty, but we're going to score fifty every game. Right. Right. Well, you got to start somewhere. Um, like old Bobby Bowden used to say, you, you start off losing big and then you lose by a little and then you win by a little and then you win by a lot. Um, yeah. So so that's that's definitely the path in which Colorado is going to have to take as, um, you know, as much of a failure as some people acted like this past season was. I mean, it, it was a decent season considering they lost. They won one game the year before. Now we're going to really see Coach Prime's coaching acumen come into play at this point. And um, getting the talent on on campus is one thing and getting them up to speed and uh, building a culture that that is a winning culture is it's a whole nother thing. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that goes for the Colorado Buffs and the Fighting Primes. Let's keep it moving. A guy named Cohen Eccles has decommitted from Texas A&M. Uh, he decommitted on December 8th, uh, along with several other players in the wake of Jimbo Fisher's firing. Um, he is a four-star interior offensive lineman who was initially interested in Texas, Auburn, and Texas Tech early in his recruitment. That's going to be a guy to watch um, as he is. And look, it's been the floodgates have opened up at Texas A&M, as you could imagine, after the Jimbo Fisher era came to an end uh, or, or almost, a, I guess, a crashing halt. Um, and then a guy named uh, – and these guys are not related, okay? Co- Cohen Eccles – and Jonathan Eccles are not brothers, okay? Uh, I, I had to go and make sure. But a guy named Jonathan Eccles also decommitted on the same day um, <laughs> from the Tennessee Vols, and it looks like Holden Stays is coming in from Notre Dame to play tight end for the Vols. This was um, probably uh, the domino that fell that caused that to happen and caused uh, Tennessee to want to go get that guy from Notre Dame. Um, so this this was a big decommitment for the Tennessee Vols, but quickly they um, – they, they, you know, conduct some damage control there. Um, so he's going to end up following his original recruiter, Alex Golish, um, who was at, at Tennessee, and he's going to be a, uh, in a first-year program at USF. Um, he's a four-star tight end, ranked number 18 among tight ends in his class. Uh, so great get for South Florida, um, kind of going out of sight, out of mind. Uh, but, but best of luck to Jonathan Eccles on that. Uh, let's kind of just jump through some of these top 15 team recruiting rankings. And if if you guys got some portal, uh, excuse me, some recruiting intel or portal intel for that matter, uh, throw it in the comment section. We'd love to hear it, uh, hear what everybody's saying on on all your individual fan bases, uh, chat rooms and all that good stuff. Uh, we, we read as much of that stuff as we can, but uh, we're in the Internet age of endless information. So uh, if you would leave us a comment on that, that would be much appreciated. Top 15 team recruiting rankings uh, as of December 12th, 2023. That's the 10th time I've said that. I'm trying to make sure that when we clip this thing up, I'm stating that it's December 12th, 2023. And this is all subject to change. But we've you've got your usual suspects up top. One one of the things, um, and I'm going to throw this on the screen so you all can see it, but one of the things that um, uh, kind of pops out to me about this is is the Florida teams. You, you've got FSU, Florida, and Miami in the top six there. Um, that's that's a big deal, not only for the those teams in the state of Florida, but big for the rest of the teams on this list. Uh, another name that, or excuse me, another team that pops out to me on this list is Notre Dame, as they are in the top 10 in recruiting and um, transfer portal. So I, I think that that's really, really big for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, obviously. Um, and, and you've got more, like I said, of your usual suspects, Clemson rounding out the top 15 there, Tennessee, Penn State, LSU, um, and Auburn there, 11 through 15. Auburn is a team that we've talked about a lot. They're on the rise and a uh, team that I've certainly got my eye on. They've got a very hard schedule next year, but we got a 12-team playoff, and I'm not so sure they can't make a, make a run at that if the dominoes fall in the, in the correct order. Uh, in, any thoughts on, on these uh, – recruiting rankings or, or any more uh, recruiting buzz that, that we need to know about? No, I think that that's, that's pretty much, uh, pretty much it for, for recruiting. I mean, typical suspects up top, UGA, Ohio state, Florida state, 
uh, and, and Alabama. Uh, Florida sneaking in at, at number five and then Miami at six. It's interesting that the three Florida schools are, are uh, participating in, in recruiting in a way that they haven't in the past, you know, five years or so. Um, so I think that that's, that's pretty interesting given that the state of Florida is such a recruiting hotbed uh, for talent. So let's see how that affects the other teams. Um, and then also let's just keep an eye on Dylan Raiola to figure out where he's going uh, and see if somebody else can, can uh, unseat the Georgia Bulldogs in the number one overall slot for 2023. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's going to be a topsy turvy uh, situation, man. It is, it's going to be crazy. We're going to try to keep you guys updated as much as we can. That's why it's super important that everybody subscribes to the show. Uh, we post community posts throughout the week. If we can't get on and go live, we'll at least, uh, drop some breaking news to you. So what you're going to want to do is hit that bell and make sure that you're getting notifications from the first and long college football show. Um, but that's going to about do it for us today. We certainly do appreciate you tuning in. Uh, we hope that you'll like the video and we hope that you'll come on back to the first and long college football show. We'd love to have you. Uh, we'll, we'll be going probably live next week. We'll see. We may do a recorded version of this. Um, but regardless, we're, we're very active in the comment section. If you got any comments, we'll, we'll be very, uh, usually very quick to respond to those. Uh, thank you all so much again for tuning in. For Marcus and Mason, we are signing out. Thanks for watching the First and Long College Football Show. Thanks.